we're here for this topic, and what, what really got me going on this whole thing was uh, when Chuck said, hey, how would you like to get something together here for, for video? And, and I thought about it and I said, yes, absolutely. And why? I mean, what's so hard about video? I mean, you know, we all watch TV, or we've been watching the two. Uh, but when you just take a look, I mean, I, I just looked at what uh, was there from a standpoint of companies talking about what's hot in video, right? <coughs> Here is from the annual report of IBM, right, that, that came out. In January 2016, we announced IBM Cloud Video Services by acquiring Aspera, CleverSafe, ClearLeap, and the video service Ustream. Video is one of the richest and fastest growing data sources expected to comprise 80% of the internet traffic by 2019. I think it's gonna happen sooner because there's already more than half the traffic is, is video, but let, but if you just look at that was in the in the report that IBM put out this month in the last two weeks. If you've been watching the news, <coughs> Vimeo acquired VHX, VHX uh, to boost their video demand uh, video on demand business. Right, hot it just happened. Right, because they want to compete and they said they're going to pay more than YouTube is for an open platform. Hulu announced that they are developing a cable-like TV package for sports, news, events, just in the last couple of weeks. Sling TV, PlayStation View. I mean, we've got all these things happening. Last week, what happened? Timing said they launched the mobile-first all-video platform, Instant, where you can see the lives and projects of digital celebrities that are there on all Snapchat, Instagram, you now. Vine. And then, just a couple of days ago, Timing said, uh, well, Timing said instant, but just a couple of days ago, uh, AT&T purchased QuickPlay. So there's a lot happening just in this month, and the month's not over yet. <laughs> so why am I excited to bring up, uh, right now, uh, starting with our moderator, uh, Carl Edwards, who is going to introduce the rest of the panel. And this is why we're here and why it's so exciting as to where things are going, what, what's going on, and that's, so get your questions ready because uh, Carl's gonna be asking some and then you will be asking some. Uh, Carl has over 13 years experience in the industry, in the telecom industry. He's a managing consultant at Incode Consulting, uh, has done a number of things before that and I'll let him introduce himself and tell you more about himself. Uh, he has an MBA in marketing from the University of South Carolina. He's got a BS in electrical engineering from the University of Utah. But he enjoys watching mobile TV, video. He watches it with his kids, his five-year-old daughter and eight-year-old son. But something that you might ask him a little later about is his passion, and he watches this and he's a big fan of European soccer. Who would have thought, right? So without much ado, hey Carl, come on up and introduce the rest of the folks. Thank you very much. And uh, as you mentioned, big soccer fan. Uh, we got European, we got Euro Cup 2016 coming up, and I will probably be watching a lot of those games. Uh, so this device right here for my iPhone. Um, just going to talk a little bit about just kind of a few slides just to kind of introduce the topic. Uh, a little bit about Inco. We've been around since '98. We have focused on a lot of different areas. But one, of course, tonight, which is important to you, is is OTT and how it is a business disrupt disruptor. And I think people are still trying to figure out how to monetize it, but we know that there's a lot of uh, there's peta, and I think it's even beyond the petabytes now in terms of video traffic. One of the big things you're seeing, well, it was interesting, probably a conference like this about 10 years ago, I stood up in front of a bunch of folks, and they were asking about predictions, what's going to happen in the next 10 years. I said at that time that this would be the device that you'd be watching much of your video content, as well as this would be the device you would use pretty much every day for many of the things you did during the day. And it's interesting how that has really become true, that uh, you know, we're seeing that Device preference for TVs is declined by 
you have PCs as a preferred device for video clips, the usage has increased by 15 percent. So, and you know, it's really interesting because I even see with my kids, um, quite often I get them ready for bed, we'll sit there and we'll watch on this device, what will we watch? We'll watch those old video clips of Looney Tunes, you know, watching Daffy Duck, uh, watching also uh, you know, the Bullwinkle Show. You know, I introduced my son to, um, you know, to all the characters on there even before that big movie came out the other, the other year about the, you know, the dog and his kid, you know, uh, Sherman and Mr. Peabody. He's, he learned about that watching the old video clips on this you know, a couple years ago. I think the other thing we're seeing is that, you know, as I mentioned, you know, the shift is, is going to smartphones. Um, they mentioned here that 50% of millennials don't watch live TV shows. I want to get a show of hands because I bet there's folks who are, you know, in the baby boomer generation here who also do not watch live TV shows. So I want to do a quick kind of informal poll. So if you have a tendency to watch TV live, you know, when the show comes on, <coughs> raise your hand. Okay. Now, how about, I'm gonna, I also want to find out about what we call time shifting, where you'll record it, you know, you'll watch it later on the DVR. How many of you tend to do that? Okay, how many of you actually have really kind of, you know, you, you've, you've cut the cord, most of the TV watching you're doing is over the internet? So, see? I mean, we're seeing a good percentage here who've actually followed that trend with the millennials. I mean, the other important thing to realize is the fragmentation of content. So, anybody here watch the TV show? It's on FX. It's called The Americans. Anybody watch that show? Okay. Last week, I'll tell you a little bit about this show. This show takes place early '80s, you know, the Reagan era. And it's about uh, a family. They're basically long-term <laughs> Russian implants. They're planning here in the states. Yeah, you know, they're they're long-term spots. And last week on that show, they had a clip where they were watching the show called The Day After. And The Day After was done in November 20th, 1983. And the concept here was that. Uh, there was actually a nuclear war that was started between the U.S. and that time of the Soviet Union. And looking at what happened the day after that nuclear war. Now here's something very interesting that I looked up after the show. There were 100 million people who watched the original live broadcast of that show. That's the largest audience ever for a TV film. 100 million people. Now let me ask you a question. How many do you think? I mean, are there any shows today do you think could get that sort of viewership? Super Bowl. Super Bowl. Super Bowl. Super Bowl. Yes. Okay. But, <laughs> but besides, <laughs> besides the Super Bowl, any, any any TV films that you think would actually get that sort of viewership? Probably not. Yeah, you because know, back then you really only had. I mean, this is '83. So CNN had come out June 1st, 1980. Did their first broadcast. Yeah, and, and some of you probably remember, you know, Bernard Shaw, he was their first news anchor. Um, uh, <clears throat> Bruce Springsteen in 1992, you know, as cable TV started to progress, he wrote the song. And he talked about how there's 57 channels on TV, but there's really nothing on. <laughs> right. Still isn't. <laughs> And now, how many channels do we have? We have hundreds of channels. As well as we also have that user-generated content. <laughs> but what do we see millennials saying? Millennials are saying several times per day they can't find anything to watch on paid TV or on OTT. So if you have that growing level of discontent and all that fragmentation, I think the big challenge is in such a competitive environment, with such a fragmentation of content. How do you create content that people are interested in? And how do you monetize that content? So with that, I want to go ahead and bring up uh, our panel. And I'm going to go ahead.